Welcome to Motion and Product. Today we're going to take the basic input field and transform it into a proper landing page that's styled and responsive. So let's get into it. The basics of all this is using groups. Groups allow you to section off content, but more importantly, these control how things flow responsively. Here I am just creating a red square to make it uh, easy for you to all see how this all works. So this is the parent container and inside that parent container will be two uh, smaller groups for the left side and the right side of the content. So I'm just going to add those things in there, give it a similar fill so that you can see uh, both the left uh, content and the right content there. And just going to adjust it so that the spacing is uh, about eight pixels between each one. And you can see by having the group like that, uh, the groups under within them stack nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and continue the rest of the design. I'm going to upload an image for the right hand side. And then once I'm done positioning all that, once we're done positioning all that, we can start looking at uh, how that looks responsively. And that looks okay to me right now. Uh, we're not going to worry too much about the small, very small sizes. And next we're going to take a look at the text. So this is the call to action, uh, the logo, um, the headers, and see how that looks. So let's look at how that works responsively. And as you can see, when we get really down to it, um, the text butts up right against the edges of the screen. So we can fix that. But how can we do that when, if we look within the controls, there's not any fields or areas where we can control the padding or the margin to give us some space between the elements. So within Bubble, you actually do that by using groups and the spaces between groups. This gives you the padding. So what I just did was just give it a little bit of space uh, from the inner left uh, group, and that gave us a nice spacing. So the next thing we're going to take a look at is styling up um, the buttons from the default styling to the style that we have in Figma. So here I'm just taking uh, styles and properties and colors uh, and then applying that into the bubble itself. And here's uh, choosing the fonts. And if you click on final elements using the styles, you can see in your whole application where, where you're using this style so that you can see the impact uh, of your changes or which pages might be affected. Cool. So updated the styling for the input box, but as you can see, things are stacking, but there's a lot of space between them. So to fix that, once again, we use a group and with the group, uh, we're going to put the input box and the button. I'm going to color it red here so that you can tell the difference between this, uh, group and the other groups that currently exist on the page. So now if we use, Join that together. We can see that it stacks nicely. Um, the gap is perfect, but the sizing of the elements themselves are a little bit strange. They they don't stretch out when they're minimized and they are always the same size. So let's remove the ability for it to be a fixed width. And then we're going to adjust some of these uh, minimum width and maximum width fields that we have here. So change minimum to 80 and then allow maximum to be 200, which means it will stretch about twice its current size. And you can see that um, with that property set, the element does stretch and shrink depending on available space. Um, there's two things in here. So the input box and the button. So we're going to just do the same kind of idea to the input box and see how that adapts and changes responsively. So it kind of shrunk a little bit too much in some areas. So we're just going to make that number a little bit bigger here. Uh, so about 80 and then let's see how that goes back in the responsive view. And yep, yeah, that looks a lot better. Now 
what we're going to do right now is just style up the whole uh, background styles um, just to fit it with the uh, designs that the designer provided. Great, we can see that it works responsively, but the design for mobile actually has the image in the middle in the input fields at the bottom, but our current layout only has um, things stacking one on top of each other, essentially left block on top of right block. So this is a little hack to get a mobile view uh, done quickly. Um, just create a separate page that's a mobile um, based on this content. So what I did was copy from uh, the current styles. And now that we are all in it, I'm just going to redesign this page as a mobile view by setting the width to 400, which kind of mimics a mobile phone size, and just go through this uh, styling this up. So now with our mobile design page, we go back to our original index page. And what we're going to do is change the mobile version to be the index mobile page. Now in preview mode, what we're going to see is that the layout of the page still remains the same for um, what we've seen before with left stacking on top of right. But when you view it on an iPhone, and here we're simulating it with the Chrome browser, you can see that the view will get swapped out. And that's it. Uh, if you thought this video was helpful, please consider giving this video a like and subscribe for more content.